Hi gang, uh, welcome back to Coffee. Uh, today I thought I'd touch on a topic that I get some questions from patients about and it's about heart failure. I want to cover what are the causes and how do you prevent and then the treatment of it will cover in a separate post. The heart is an organ that sits, of course, as we know, on the left side of the chest. It is really the pump that keeps the blood circulating. So in other words, Think about it like a pump that we see outside that we use perhaps for moving water around the house, uh, for pumps that move things around in the pond, etc. So the heart is essentially a pump. It's a muscular organ, but very intricately set up with four chambers. The top two chambers of the heart receive the blood from all over, from the lungs, from different areas, and the bottom two chambers uh, then push it out. So this pushing out is referred to in medical terms as ejection fraction. So really what's happening in heart failure is that the heart is not able to provide enough output or enough pumping action to keep all tissues oxygenated uh, around the body. The blood carries oxygen and the blood is pumped by the heart. So really the basic fundamental is as we breathe in, the air that we breathe in takes the oxygen in the oxygen then gets dissolved in the lungs, in the blood. The blood is then taken from the lungs to the heart and then pumped all over. So if there is pump failure, that's what heart failure is. In other words, the end organs or tissues are not receiving enough oxygen supply because the blood is not reaching it in adequate manner. There are two terms that medically we use, uh, and I'm a little technical here. One is heart failure, where the, uh, ha uh, where the heart is still pumping, but the ejection fraction is preserved. Ejection fraction is a term where the bottom two chambers of the heart receive the blood, and at least 50% or more of the blood that they receive is getting pumped out with each beat. So that's what ejection fraction is. So heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, that's one term. And the second term is heart failure with reduced ejection fraction is the other term. There's also another uh, form of heart failure, which is called diastolic dysfunction, where the heart muscle becomes really thick and doesn't relax and causes different problems from that. The scope of heart failure in our country is big about 6.2 million people have heart failure and there's approximately a million admissions all over the nation uh, uh, when things were studied a few years ago. Now as we talked about, we talked about heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction and then there's sort of a sister variety which is called diastolic dysfunction and this is what I was talking about where the heart doesn't the muscle becomes so tight and doesn't relax, uh, therefore uh, uh, that's a form. Uh, in terms of the ejection fraction, the, the cutoff is about 50%. In other words, if at each beat, the lower chambers of the heart don't pump out uh, more than 50% of the blood that's in there, that's what's called heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. What are the causes of heart failure? The biggest one by far is coronary artery disease. When the blood supply to the heart goes down, the either because there is a heart attack in which a portion of the muscle dies or the blood doesn't get there, the muscle stops functioning because that the heart itself needs blood to itself to keep the function going. Other risk factors include through coronary artery disease, high blood pressure, uh, smoking and high blood pressure by itself causes the heart, mu heart muscle to kind of pump. Think about it that when the heart is pumping, the, it's pumping against pressure because the blood vessels are too tight. That's essentially what's happening in high blood pressure. In, in patients with diabetes, uh, uh, the, uh, obesity, that can be a separate uh, type of, uh, it affects the heart. Sometimes the valves, that's the uh, 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 structures that uh, hang between the upper portion of the heart and the lower portion of the heart, those valves start getting damaged for a number of reasons, either age related or because of heart failure related or coronary artery disease or perhaps 
rheumatic fever as a kid, those kind of things, the valves start getting messed up and when the valves start getting messed up, the pump starts getting affected. There are certain conditions where certain substances just infiltrate or soak through the muzzle and cause the muzzle not to pump. So those are called infiltrative diseases. Sometimes for unknown causes after pregnancy, the heart fails. HIV, uh, substance abuse such as cocaine, etc. can affect the uh, heart. And there are certain chemotherapeutic agents such as doxorubicin, which can affect the heart uh, when uh, chemotherapy is given. So there's a, a big list of this and from this flows how we can prevent heart disease. By far the number one thing that we can do to prevent heart disease is treat hypertension, treat diabetes, prevent coronary artery disease or treat coronary artery disease if you have it. But those goes, you know, those are things that we've covered in previous posts by checking for blood pressure, by healthy lifestyle, by eating uh, a, a Mediterranean type diet, by eating a plant-based diet, by, uh, by maintaining or striving to maintain a normal body weight. And of course, the big thing is, you know, uh, not smoking and, ex and of course, exercising. All of these play together. There has been a lot of data that decreasing alcohol can also help because alcohol does tend to suppress the pump. In some people, an evaluation for structural heart disease is necessary by means of an echocardiogram. This is like that ultrasound type thing that's done of the heart that can give us a lot of information if the valves are working right, if there's any kind of other structural function problems, you know. So an echocardiogram can sometimes be helpful. Uh, uh, and the signs, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about signs and symptoms, but the main sign and symptom by far is difficulty breathing or having not able to get up and walk or some kind of decrease in our functional capacity along with fluid retention or leg swelling. These are the things that bring heart failure to the surface. So in our next post, uh, we'll cover a little bit more about what the approach can be, uh, what the triggering symptoms can be, and what the treatments are based on these mechanisms that I'm explaining. I hope this has been somewhat useful and stimulates some thought. As always, the idea of these posts are to empower you to think about your own health, to think about your own health conditions, and try to manage them appropriately with your healthcare provider. Thank you.